Good evening and welcome to Sunday Evening Chapel on Sunday, May 17th. This is our final Sunday Chapel of the year, so I want to begin tonight by thanking Mr. Dobbins and Mr. Chapman and the Chapel Prefects for doing such an exceptional job at keeping this part of our life moving forward, albeit in a very different way. Uh, second thing I want to do is say a little bit about this flag as a final installation in my Brooks School and Ashburn Chapel Bits and Pieces of History segment. Uh, this flag, as some of you know, uh, is a series of stars, mostly blue stars, remembering those in the first 15 graduating classes who served their country uh, after their time here. Those classes graduated between 1932 and 1946. And at the top of the flag are 12 gold stars that remember uh, 12 Brooksians from that period who died in service to their country, uh, all of them uh, during World War II. They were remembered here in a service in June of 1946 when the flag uh, first went up. Uh, last thing I'm going to say tonight is just how much the space has missed you and to underline that whether you are graduating uh, a week from tomorrow, uh, or returning for three more years, that this space that has felt eerily empty to me as I've come in on a weekly basis to film these welcome videos uh, is your space, and it will continue to be here. And you will be here again at some point in some way uh, in your life as a student or as an alum, and probably as both. Uh, so know that uh, through the discomfort and challenge that we face together this spring, this space has missed you, the school has missed you, and we will be here again before too long. So take good care as you head into your Sunday evening and into your new week. I will look forward to continuing to be in touch as we aim to finish as well as we can over the second half of the month and know how grateful I am to be a part of this community. Have a good night. Our opening hymn is Seek Ye First. Today's first reading is from the Gospel of John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will be given a new advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor knows. You know because the spirit abides with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Our second reading is from Mabel Katz, an Argentinian speaker and student of the traditional Hawaiian practice of forgiveness and reconciliation. Hey everyone. This is our last chapel service of this year. As strange and challenging as this year has been, for me it's also been a wonderful year. 
and I've loved being with you all and being part of the Brooks community. I want to thank Mr. Packard and all of you at Brooks for the, pri for the privilege of being here. In our second reading tonight, Mabel Katz says, God, the spirit of love, can heal anything. Our job is to give permission. It takes a lot of trust. So what's trust? I think about skydiving. If you go skydiving, you go up in an airplane, you walk up to the open door of the plane, and you jump out. And you trust that you can manage the fall. You trust that your parachute will open when you pull the string. You trust that you'll be able to land safely. I also think about falling in love. When you fall in love with someone, you trust that you can share the deepest and most vulnerable and most broken parts of yourself and that you'll still be accepted and loved. So for me, I think of trust as, as having the confidence, the conviction that the universe is basically good and welcoming, that our parachute will open, that the person we fall in love with will accept and love us no matter what our weaknesses or failures or faults are. Right now, all over the world, it seems as though we hum human beings are facing a challenge of trust. There's a virus going around the world that we don't understand very well. And every week, it seems to have some new and strange and harmful effect. And we're still struggling to know how to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe. Leaders everywhere, even the best of them, are having a hard time knowing how to protect their people. And in some cases, leadership doesn't seem to care much about protecting the people, just about protecting its own backside. So a lot of us are unsure about who to trust. Sometimes we're not willing, we're not very willing to trust anybody. Mabel Katz says that the spirit of love can heal anything but that our job is to give it permission and that it takes a lot of trust. Ultimately, for us to trust means that we accept that the universe is okay, that it's a decent place, that it doesn't mean us harm. Another way of saying that is that God loves us. That doesn't mean that we're always going to get things the way we like them. It doesn't mean that there's never going to be pain or suffering or death, it does mean that even in the midst of pain and suffering, and even in the midst of death, there is still joy and love. And that joy and love is ours when we trust in the universe, when we trust in God, and accept life for what it is. So trust and acceptance and love, they come together. We can't have love without acceptance, and we can't have acceptance without trust. It's perfectly possible to go through life without trust and acceptance, and I think most of us know some people who are trying to do that. But without trust and acceptance, there isn't any love. Without trust and acceptance, there can be using others, there can be taking advantage, maybe there can be getting what you want from others, but there can't be love, because love is about trust and acceptance. And without love, there's really, there's no real life. There's a pantomime, there's a pretend show, but there isn't really real life. In today's first reading, Jesus is talking to his followers just before his death. He tells them that he's going to be gone but that the spirit of love will be with them and in them and will give them strength to deal with whatever challenges life brings along. He's talking about the spirit of love that we're all invited to share in, the spirit that makes life wondrous and joyful and full of grace and strength and power, even in the worst circumstances, the spirit of love that seeks us all out, that wants nothing more, than to fill our hearts with joy. But as Mabel Katz points out, we have to give permission. The Spirit won't come 
unless we invite it. We have to allow it. And that takes trust. We have to walk up to that airplane door and jump. And you know what? If we jump, love will catch us every time. I wish you all a summer of trust and acceptance and health and love. Be well. Amen. Our closing hymn is the school hymn.